Yeah. Joining us now is former Defense Secretary Mark Esper, now a board member at Epirus and a partner at Red Cell Ventures. Uh, Mr. Secretary, thank you for being with us today. Um, Good morning, Morgan. Uh, uh, more, as I said at the beginning of our show, more questions than answers right now. But I guess just walk us through the significance, uh, as some Pentagon official said last night, uh, of of these shoot downs, which have been unprecedented precedented in, in, in times of peace over U.S. airspace. Well, I think you have to go back to the Chinese spy, uh, spy balloon that traversed the United States. It, it clearly caught us off guard in a number of ways. And the Pentagon went back and adjusted both its, uh, its instrumentation, its filters, its reporting procedures. And so now what you see is, I suspect, what's been happening for quite some time. We often have uh, objects violating our airspace. And uh, my, my hunch is that these latest objects over the past three days are probably not spy balloons, maybe they are, but more, more climate, uh, weather balloons, uh, scientific research platforms, you name it. But we really won't know for sure until the wreckage is recovered, it's taken to a place where the forensics can be done and reports are made. Uh, I assume if it's some type of civilian, commercial, private, corporate, you name it, uh, uh, product, then we should know that pretty quickly. But if it's a spy balloon or spy device, it will take a little bit more time. Okay. Um, ahead of these three shootdowns over the weekend, you had General Van Herc from uh, NORAD basically disclosing that there are gaps in our air defense picture. Um, it, it would seem that, based on the activities over the weekend, that perhaps they are examining more of the data and maybe they're trying to close some of those gaps. But what can be done to close those gaps? And how does that speak to what future capabilities are going to be needed in, in terms of the U.S. Uh, defense, airspace defense picture? Yeah, I think on the technical side, what we need to do is modernize our ground-based radar stations. We've been talking about that for years. I know Northcom wants to do that uh, pretty pretty bad because we need to see further over the horizon of what we can do now. And then I think if you go to the other end of the uh, other end of the um, spectrum, what we need to do is really build AI and machine learning into the back end, so that as we get all these radar feeds and other data, we can really sort through it in a more methodical way, more quickly and to sort out what's what. I, I think that's what's happened here recently in terms of the instrumentation was we adjusted our filters, like just like you would adjust your spam filter on your iPhone or your, your iPad. I think on the other part, uh, you know, we need to improve pr reporting procedures. That seems to have happened fairly quickly at the Pentagon. And then third, what are our policies with regard to uh, aircraft, objects, balloons entering our airspace? And how do we des decide what to do, whether it's authorized, unauthorized, manned, unmanned, uh, you know, military, commercial, I think there's going to be a, a really a policy review about what we do and how we do it now that we know so much of this is happening. How quickly can that policy review happen? And I ask that because, especially where this first balloon is concerned, uh, there's a real concern of escalation between the U.S. and China now. Yeah, well, on one hand, the policy has been being written in real time because what the Biden administration is now saying is if you are unauthorized in our airspace and you're unmanned, and we can verify whether it's unmanned by doing the flybys, then we will shoot you down. Uh, that's a pretty good place to start, but I think over time it needs to be refined. With regard to the uh, uh, the escalation between the United States and China, and I think this will be very important for your your audience here. This is uh, what's happening here is just a more of a downward spiral between the the two countries and you know the the two largest economies in the world. And we know that in the last 24 hours, China is now claiming that the United States is flying balloons over China, and this they're 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 playing this tit for tat game, but. I think the bigger picture analysis is that the, the relationship is spiraling downward. And what type of decoupling will we see between the two countries over time? It's, it's already begun, but how far will it go? Could we actually be flying spy balloons over China right now? Well, I'd never talk about what we would do or wouldn't do. But look, if there are unauthorized balloons over Chinese airspace violating their sovereignty, then they have the right to shoot them down just as much as we do. What we don't like is the fact that the Chinese contest our uh, our uh, surveillance flights that are conducted in, in international air over international waters and, and, and whatnot. That's where they violate the rules of the road, and that cannot be tolerated. Okay, so looking at the Chinese perspective spy balloon from a week and a half ago, maybe perhaps the fact that we don't know what these last three unidentified objects are, uh, so putting those to the side here. What does this mean? What does all of this mean in terms of the trajectory for future defense spending and also, just as importantly, how we prioritize foreign military sales to the likes of, say, Taiwan? Yeah, look, I think uh, all, the, all of our NATO allies, for sure, 
Other partners around the world are also probably looking at their aerospace defenses, their ability to detect intrusions into their airspace, and they should rightly do that. I think this signals that the defense spending is going to continue to be strong for the coming years. Uh, there's no weakening in terms of the threats to our country, certainly not from China. Russia uh, is still, uh, uh, it seems to be beginning an offensive in Ukraine. There hasn't been much talk about that because of the focus on Ukraine. So I think this is another domain, if you will, that militaries across the world, uh, Western militaries, will be looking at to make sure that they can protect their airspace and guarantee their sovereignty.